This is math for adults. I know as time goes by, we all forget math, and I'm here to remind you what it was. Today, we're going to remind you what standard deviation and variance was and how it can be useful. Now that you're an adult, you probably joined a lot of meetings where they like to start the call by talking about the weather. And I really decide talking about the weather because it changes. I mean, geez, can we talk about the social and economic state of the world? So now I want to move to a city in the US where the weather doesn't change a lot. And guess what I'm going to need? I'm going to need standard deviation and variance. This is the formula for variance, but I'm going to show you how to calculate it in a table while I'm sitting at my table. So imagine we have 12 data points like this. This is how you would calculate the standard deviation. First, you have to calculate the average, which is just the average of the values here. And I have to anchor these formulas so it's the same on all the rows. Then you need to calculate x minus the average. I'm gonna write it down. So x minus the average. Then we have to square that. I'm just going to write squared, which going to, it's just going to be this to the power of 2. And then finally, you sum up all of these squared numbers, which is the sum of everything above it, which is this number, and then you divide it by the count of how many data points we have, which we have 12 data points, okay? This will give you the variance, and then the square root of this is going to be uh, the standard deviation. So standard deviation is going to be square root of this number, which is 5.6, and if I use the Excel formula, which is here, a standard deviation for the sample, so here's the thing, if you wanna do it for the sample, it has to be count minus one. I'm not gonna explain why that is, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, so now we're going to do the formula method, standard deviation s of the values here, which is exactly the same number as we had there, okay? So that's how you calculate standard deviation. Now I have a large data set of the daily observed temperature of many cities in the US, and I'm going to calculate the standard deviation for each of them over about two years. Aren't you just going to use the standard deviation formula in Excel? Aren't you just going to use the standard deviation? Get a load of this guy, and actually I'm going to use the pivot table and then change the value field settings to standard deviation, but whatever. Hey, I'm the one doing all the work here. If you calculate the standard deviation of the observed temperatures in these cities, these are the results you're going to get. So you can see St. Thomas and the Virgin Islands has a standard deviation of five degrees where the average temperature was 80 degrees over a year and a half. So this is the place I want to move to if I want to hear less about, uh, you know, weather changing <laughs> arguments during meetings. If you look at all of the cities in this list, uh, they do have something in common. I think they're mostly kind of expensive cities, aren't they? And I guess my whole theory is out the door because I do live in one of these cities, but I still get a lot of conversations about the weather. Guess I gotta come up with a new idea. Also, if you're curious what's at the bottom of the list, you can see here Fairbanks, Arkansas, 30 degree variance, it's a standard deviation. Ooh, that's really high. Fargo, Bismarck, all of these have a lot of variance and they're kind of cold as well. So you can see the colder cities have more variance, it seems like here. Interesting. Don't forget to like and follow for more science content.